At the cashier counter, this man not only would not have to pay, but also got more money. Let's see how he did. The goods cost Joan $5. First, he took out a $50 note. The cashier gave him $45 change. Now, Joan found out he had a $5 note. Then he took $45 on the table and started counting and said that was $50. He said, you may need a lot of changes right. I will give you $50 more, would you please give $100 in exchange? Then, although it was a bit confusing, the cashier still gave him a $100 note. Could you count how much he made from that? When Joan was about to leave, he found out the cashiers had switched shift. He decided to stay and earned a bit more. He took another good to the cashier. The previous cashier unexpectedly returned. At this moment, she acknowledged that she was tricked. When she saw Joan, she immediately told the colleague next to her. The male staff caught Joan and asked his colleague to call the police. Then suddenly, a man named Marcus appears. He said, I am a policeman, you no need to call the others. He also said, I have been noticing him for a while. He told the cashiers, I will keep him and also keep all the cash to be the evidence. I will return the money as soon as I finish interrogating him. After Marcus and Joan left the convenience store, Marcus started to check the goods stolen from the store. At this moment, Joan knew that he had met a person doing the same job. Marcus had a gun, but it was a toy. Joan expressed his appreciation then was about to leave. Marcus asked Joan whether he wanted to be his colleague. Joan seemed like he didn't want to do it. Thus, Marcus decided to persuade Joan by his action. He took Joan to an apartment block. He rang a bell and said, Hi auntie. Actually this was an old trick that worked all the time. Suppose that the auntie had a grandson. Marcus said that his car was broken and he parked it nearby. He got no money so he wanted to borrow her couple of dollars. He also said that he could not park his car for too long and asked her to give the money to his friend. A moment later the auntie came down and gave the money to Joan. In the end, Marcus not only deceived the woman for $100 but also got a ring. Next, they passed by a coffee shop. Marcus once again wanted to show off his skill. Could the $100 note, torn in the upper corner, be useful? Marcus said yes and stated that he could make huge profit just by the torn note. They got inside, ordered coffees and paid like normal, and must pretend that they didn't know each other. Then Marcus also ordered a coffee. When he received the drink, he asked the waiter, where's my change? The waiter replied, you haven't paid yet. Marcus heard that, became angry and called the manager. Marcus stated that he got total $200 in his wallet. He paid 10 minutes ago by a $100 note. He even took out the wallet to show the manager. He said, the note I gave you is the one torn in the upper corner. You can check with the cashier, there's must be my note. And things turned out that all Marcus said were right. Finally, $100 became $200. Next, an old colleague talked to Marcus. He said that the hotel was going to welcome a wealthy man who brought with him $5 billion. According to him, this wealthy man was a stamp collector. The old man's sister was happened to have a limited stamp collection of the nine queens. So he replicated the collection and was about to sell the collection to that wealthy man, because the wealthy man had booked the flight, and would arrive the next day, so he had not so much time to did it carefully, we could say this chance was rare, but the man was old and sometimes he had heart attack, so he asked for Marcus help, Marcus and Joan took the fake collection and step by step tricked that wealthy man, Marcus followed that rich man into the restroom, intentionally spoke loudly on the phone, that he wanted to sell the stamp collection of the nine queens, the wealthy man heard that and dragged them to the conference room to negotiate, he just took a look at the picture and decided to buy the collection within today, he asked Joan and Marcus to bring the collection here an hour later. Marcus and Joan quickly took the collection to the room of the wealthy man. The rich man handled the collection to an expert to examine it. The meticulousness and carefulness of the expert made Marcus and Joan anxious. Fortunately, the expert said everything was good, the collection was real. The rich man wanted to pay $450,000 and would do the payment at that night. Right at the moment Marcus and Joan celebrated, suddenly a motorbike passed by and took the collection. On the way chasing, the robber threw the collection into the lake. When Marcus and Joan got it up, Everything was wet and could not be used anymore. This made Marcus and Joan totally depressed. Marcus suddenly thought about the old colleague's sister. She was the one who had the real collection. So they wanted to buy that back. After the negotiation, the price was $250,000. Joan heard that then took Marcus out and said that they could not find that much money in such a short time. But Marcus didn't want to miss this $200,000 chance. He decided to take out his inheritance from parents. The duo finally got $250,000 to buy the real collection. Then quickly came to the hotel to do the transaction with that rich man, and they met Marcus's sister. They looked at each other like a long-lasting enemy, because Marcus had taken all the money owned by her and the younger brother. The rich man knew this and gave Marcus one condition. Marcus's sister had to serve him for one night, otherwise, there would be no deal. This made Marcus awkward, but money had covered his eyes, he begged his sister to help him. He thought that he just had to give his sister some money to persuade her. But the sister said that she did not need money. She only needed Marcus admit that he had taken the brother's money in front of him. The brother cut out the relationship with Marcus when he knew everything. The sister kept her promise brought the collection into the rich man's room. Next morning, Marcus saw the rich man had left. The sister threw him a case. Marcus immediately opened it up. It was a check, then scolded his sister. 
I said I only take cash. Joan said, check is also money, just take it to the bank. There is one nearby. On the way to the bank, a creditor of Marcus appeared. He threatened Marcus to pay or else he would shoot him. In the dead end, Marcus had to give the creditor the case. The creditor opened the case and there was no check at all. Joan immediately revealed all of Marcus's trick. It turned out, Marcus not only didn't want to share Joan the money, but also wanted to steal Joan's $500,000. Luckily, Joan was cautious and soon took the check out. So, Marcus had to follow Joan to the bank. But when they got to the bank, they were all surprised. There was a crowd in front of the bank. Marcus immediately took the check through the crowd to the door. After a while asking around, he knew that the bank had gone bankrupt. Marcus became depressed. He not only could not get $450,000 in cash, but also lost $200,000. Joan just silently left. The scene now was in a warehouse. The rich man, the old colleagues were all here. It turned out all of this was Joan's plan. The plan started at the convenience store. The aim was to claim back the money that Marcus took from Joan's wife. This plan truly blew my mind. I thought Joan was a good man, I was fooled. There were all lies from the beginning to the end of the film. The ring turned out to be Joan's family treasure. Thank you for watching. Bye.